What is up, Steelers Nation? Thank you so much for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. I'm Noah Strackbine, joined by my main man, Stephen Thompson. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk or subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. The Pittsburgh Steelers, they are not done making moves yet. They signed safety Deshaun Elliott yesterday, re-signed defensive tackle Montrevious Adams. They're set to introduce a couple of names today for their first press conference in Pittsburgh, an exciting weekend for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think there's much more coming for this team as they approach the end of week one, head into the beginning of week two of free agency. You're down in uh good old Washington, DC Pitts winning some basketball games. It's a good time to be a Pittsburgh fan right now. I got to say, how you feeling my friend? I feel great. I'm extremely tired, um, but yeah. I, I feel great. I mean, look, I like, this is the time of year where getting to go to work for an extra day is, is not a bad thing. When when your team yes. keeps winning, uh, the team you cover keeps winning, uh, you get to to watch some more high-level basketball. You get to watch some more high-level games. You get to be in cool environments. I'm, I'm all about that. I'll, I'll deal with the uh, – I'll deal with a few less hours, a few fewer hours of sleep if it means I get to get to get to work through, through those things. I agree 100%. This is the time of year. I mean, Pitt, Pittsburgh fans are where it's at. And to, to show up for a basketball game, I mean, is – that's like a whole other level of, of love for the city and for the fan base. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's a good week to be a Pittsburgh fan. You know, Pitt's winning. Steelers are making big moves. The Penguins are back in playoff contention. It's, it's one hell of a week to be a Pittsburgh sports fan. Plenty of moves for the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going to dive into them. We're going to give our grades a potential wide receiver signing that might have just arose, risen yesterday that the Steelers should and could keep an eye on moving into the weekend. First, a quick call to action. As we've been saying every single day, go subscribe to our Clips YouTube page. The link is in the comments below. You, you enter immediately to win a signed Mean Joe Green jersey. We just surpassed 500, so we're already looking at more giveaways to give away once we hit 1,000 subscribers. So make sure to go do that. We appreciate all the support, man. It's crazy that we hit 500 this quickly, and we cannot wait to hit 1,000 and continue to grow it much like we did this one. Let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and a busy day yesterday. Everybody's talking about safety. Everybody's talking about defensive line. Everybody's talking about center. Everybody's talking about wide receiver. Those are the big four positions that the Pittsburgh Steelers needed to fill heading into yesterday. They add Deshaun Elliott. They re-sign Montrevious Adams. We're going to dive into both of those. First, let's recap what has happened so far. Russell Wilson comes to Pittsburgh on a one-year deal. Patrick Queen comes to Pittsburgh on a three-year deal. Deshaun Elliott comes to Pittsburgh on a two-year deal. Cameron Johnston comes to Pittsburgh on a three-year deal or a two-year deal, $9 million, three-year deal, $9 million. They re-signed Miles Killebrew. They re-signed Christian Kuntz. They re-signed Montrevious Adams. Week one is in the bag. We are here. They're still looking for a wide receiver. They still got a couple of moves left. They still got plenty of money, somewhere around $15 million. What's your grade? Week one, Pittsburgh Steelers free agency. Yeah, I, I so I was I was thinking about this question and, and I was considering you know I wanted to my first gut instinct was to give them a really good grade because yes. I don't know I've been really impressed with it and then I kind of walked myself back I was like well you know I don't want to overdo it I, I don't I don't want to you know kind of oversell what the Steelers have done so far but I, I'm having trouble finding holes in in any mo of the moves that they've made. Uh, if, if anything, yep. the only reason you'd be upset with what the Steelers have done so far is because you don't think they've done enough. But like you said, they still have money to to spend and moves to make. So I'm going to give the Steelers an A minus. Um, they didn't quite get one of those safeties that I that I really wanted, but um, this is and, and you know they still need a receiver as well. But um, I, I have trouble finding a finding an issue with getting an upgrade at quarterback, getting an upgrade at at inside linebacker, finding yep. a safety, a starting caliber safety uh, to fill in next to to Mika Fitzpatrick, and getting Montrevious Adams back is huge for the defensive line as well. Um, so I'm going to go a minus. I've been really impressed with what they've done so far, and I, I think the the fact that they still have some moves to make, I think helps them uh and, and makes me look you know more favorably upon what they've done you know 15 million dollars is a lot of money um and yes. they don't need to make any i, I don't know I, I don't think there's a position where they need to make a huge splash in uh before the the before the nfl draft begins yeah look at i uh i i agree with everything you just said i was thinking about this all day and my initial reaction was oh a plus everything they've done a plus there's you know you get russ for a one million dollar deal cheap you allow yourself to do a bunch of things 
Awesome. You go get Patrick Queen. That was a win. Like that immediate that signing right there, A plus to yeah. get him for 13.6 when his market value was 18. Wild. A plus right there. Cameron Johnston. I'm all about Cameron Johnston. I think it's an upgrade at punter. I don't really care about a punter contract. I don't really care as long as you're it's somewhat cheap. Three million dollars, good enough. I'm cool with that one. Deshaun Elliott kind of threw me for a loop a little bit. Didn't see that one coming. But the more I dove into the film, the more I dove into who he was. And we're going to give a deep dive into who Deshaun Elliott is and what he brings to the Pittsburgh Steelers here in a minute. I think that's a good move as well. I think that does a lot of things that the Pittsburgh Steelers have missed out on. I think it shores up another part of that defense and a part of that team that the Steelers needed to upgrade at. Everybody's saying, oh, he's the next Keanu Neal. He replaces Keanu Neal. I mean, he does, but he does way more than what Keanu Neal is capable of doing as a football player, and I think that that is a massive upgrade for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Resigning Miles Killebrew, I said all offseason, was the one thing you had to do. Christian Kuntz, I like as well, and Montrevis Adams is, I mean, look, he might be one of the most undervalued guys on that defense, so I'm all about it. A minus, I was thinking an A. I was thinking an A. I think I, I decided to go lower. I think I'm going B plus so far. And okay. I know, I think, I think individually everything is above an A. I think what they haven't done so far leaves me cautiously optimistic. So I think that they could sign a center. I think that they will sign a wide receiver. I think that they could sign a defensive lineman. But you got to do all three because you cannot go in there right now with George Pickens and Calvin Austin as your only wideouts. Just can't happen. You're watching guys fly off the board. I mean, Tyler Boyd would be cool, but you don't even know if you're going to land him. If not, we got another name later in the show that we're going to talk about. Maybe that's an option, and I think that's a good option. But, again, he's not going to be an A+. plus. You know, I don't even think Tyler Boyd's going to be an A+. plus. So I think that that's, that position is questionable. Defensive line, you got to add some. Like, the fact that the Pittsburgh Steelers are completely ignoring their defensive line is concerning. That is the one spot where I'm just sitting around going, you guys were really bad in the run game last year, like really bad. And you were really bad the year before that in the run game. You have to sure up that defensive line. You haven't touched it. That makes me a little bit nervous. That's the one position that makes me a little bit nervous. And then, I mean, you got to go center at some point. You need a center. There's maybe only two left, and both of them are coming off season-ending injuries. So I don't know what your thoughts are there. Maybe you're going into the NFL draft and you are gung-ho, 100% sold. We are drafting Jackson Powers Johnson or Zach Frazier. If that's the case, cool. I'm all about it. But I can't read the Steelers' mind. I'm just taking a guess. So I'm going to go B+. Plus. I think that that's you know, still a fantastic grade. I mean, you look at years past, you're sitting around trying to come up with reasons to give Cole Holcomb and Alandon Roberts A's. And this year it's like, okay, this is a move. You know, this is you. In every position, you have upgraded something. And I think that that is something that the Steelers haven't done in a while. So I'm going to go B plus, And I think there's potential potential to be an A. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think I, I I agree with you, especially about, you know, receiver. Um, Like guys are flying off the board and there aren't that many big names or quality names, names that give you an upgrade uh, kind of yeah. left on the board. Um, I, I worry about, you know, I think this that room needs some – veteran like a veteran presence you know like yes. like you said uh george pickens and calvin austin being your uh locker room leaders or your position group leaders not probably ideal um but i also you know as far as like you know center and offensive tackle um things like that like yeah uh cornerback too like i i think the draft is going to be loaded for stuff like that and i think that's where they're looking i think that's why i didn't grade them as low um i think they're kind of picking and choosing their spots to a certain extent um mm -hmm. And these are these are spots where they think we can find a starter quality guy in the NFL draft. So we are not, uh, you know, as I don't know, maybe not. I, I don't think not as concerned is the right word, but I don't think uh, there is press to um, to you know make make moves in free agency when they know that like you're not going to lock yourself into you know a veteran free agent that you know maybe is below the the level of what you were what you were aiming for if there's potential to land a guy in the NFL draft who could, who could be a starter for a long time. I agree. I agree with that. I think that's a good point that the Steelers, if they're looking draft, that, that changes things drastically. And I think that off season grades when we're, when we're at the end of this could change a ton. And I have a lot of faith in Omar Khan, like Omar Khan has, has given zero reason not to have any faith in this guy. So if you think, and if you're a fan and you think 
the Steelers are going to get this done. There's no worries there. Then I would keep that faith and I would not, I would not steer away from it because there's no reason not to steer away from it. It feels like a new day for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, a win overall big wins for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've done a lot of good. And I think that there is a lot of optimism when it comes to where this team is headed. Now let's sign, dive into yesterday. Big signing Deshaun Elliott, a name that was very much so not on many people's boards. There were so many names out there. Justin Simmons was the big one. Obviously, he's still floating around somewhere. 26 years old, he'll be 27 at the start of the season. 50 games of starting experience. Last season, he had 82 tackles. He's got a career high or a career of 287 tackles, three interceptions each year. The past three years landed an interception. Comes from Baltimore, Detroit, Miami. The word I got to describe him yesterday when I spoke to somebody in Miami was dudes as physical as it comes. Maybe that's what the Pittsburgh Steelers need. Your thoughts when you saw the signing? Yeah, I mean, look physical. That sounds like a Steeler. That's a that's a buzzword we like. Um, I, I love that he's young. Um, I love that it's it's two years, six million dollars. That's dirt yes. cheap uh, for this team. Um, like I said, he's young uh, and he's productive. Um, this guy, you know, eighty-two tackles over fifteen games, a pick, and seven passes defended. Uh, I mean. I think this is also a good kind of mm, – I don't know what the word – it's a good fit alongside Minka Fitzpatrick, I think. Um, yes. I think you get a guy who can play in the box a little bit more, more of a strong safety as opposed to a free safety. You let Minka Fitzpatrick play in that role that I think we've talked about a bunch before where he's at his best in that center fielder role um, where he can make plays on the ball. He can kind of uh, play with his instincts and kind of let his instincts run wild. I think that's the best fit for him. Uh, yeah. And if he's able to do that um, – you know, with, with Deshaun Elliott there, who can, who can fill in a different role. Um, it, it was, you know, I saw that name, you know, I saw the name pop up. I saw the alert. I saw, you know, people talking about it and I was like, Oh, you know, a little underwhelming, you know, especially yes. when Justin Fields, Jordan, Jordan Poyer, Micah Hyde, and I'm going to, you know, forget some of the other safeties that were, that were available, but there were big names available. Um, and I was hoping the Steelers would take a swing on a guy like that. But um, if you're looking for, more of a budget option, a value option. I, I think Elliot is a great, great pick. Um, and I think, like you said, the more you dive into what this guy has done and what he's produced, um, this looks like a pretty ideal fit for the Steelers and, uh, and yes. a good pickup, especially at the price and especially at this at this guy's age. Yeah, I agree. Look, at, you, you looked at Justin Simmons and that was obviously like, that was the key. That was the boom. That was, go get Justin Simmons. Everybody wanted Justin Simmons. There were other names out there that probably were almost just as, as expensive. The problem with that, and the only problem that you had continuously, I mean, me, I've talked about this every single day on the podcast when it came to Justin Simmons, is you're going to pay your safeties $30 million with Justin Simmons. And $30 million for some safeties is crazy. Like that is, there are a lot of positions where you will pay a lot of money for more than market value. Safety is just not one of them. It never has been. There are not a lot of teams out there that spend as much as the Pittsburgh Steelers spend on defense, let alone one position. That was the only that was the only issue to get somebody, maybe a second tier free agent, maybe even a third tier free agent. For six million dollars, I think it's like I don't know what the exact details of the contract are. I haven't seen them yet, but I would imagine it's under a three million dollar cap hit in 2024. That's that's good. That solves that one issue that you had. And to be 27 years old by the start of the season, to be a sure tackler, I think that's the biggest thing here. Is yeah, he he fits well next to Minka Fitzpatrick because he allows Minka to to play where Minka plays best, and that's not what the Pittsburgh Steelers had in mind. And maybe something along the way changed, but they have been trying for years to make Minka Fitzpatrick just a Troy Polamalu, go all over the place, do whatever you want, make some noise. And I think he he does that well. You know, he's Minka Fitzpatrick; he does everything well. But I think his best game is making plays deep, making sure nothing gets behind him, and just being that lockdown safety where, sorry, but you cannot, you're not going to throw deep because I'm going to come up with the football. I think that's the best case scenario for the Steelers. They needed somebody who could tackle. They desperately needed somebody who could tackle. We went so many games last season where you're watching replays and Patrick Peterson is just like backing off guys. Joey Porter Jr. is missing tackles. DeMonte KZ is missing tackles. You needed somebody so desperately who can tackle. Deshaun Elliott might be the most pure tackler in the free agency class. So I think that that is a perfect fit. When it comes to where he'll play, I think a lot of people have questions about that. Is this a backup? Is he a starter? He's a starter. 
I would see DeMonte KZ falling into that third role and using that as the rotation. And I think that that works very well because I think the Steelers love what DeMonte KZ brings as that third safety. This guy is this guy's a Terrell Edmonds and probably an upgrade over Terrell Edmonds just because he has a little bit more going on. Yeah, yeah. I think he's, you know, he seems like he's, mm, I don't know if a better, I think he's a, more, a little bit more of a complete player than yes. than Terrell Edmonds was. Like, it seems like yes. he's a better pass coverage guy uh, than Edmonds was. Like, I like Terrell Edmonds, but I think this is this is definitely an upgrade. I'm, I'm like, I don't know, the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of shocked that the Steelers got him on this kind of deal. Like, yeah, I know the safety market's rough, but like, this is $6 million over two years for a guy who's going to, to start both of those years for you like he's gonna play you know this guy is clearly uh pretty durable uh played you know 29 games over the past two seasons like he's available he's productive and he's gonna be really cheap like this is uh, this is a great signing i don't know in my opinion um i i yeah. i think he's clearly an upgrade over i like i like demonte casey too um but i think demonte casey is also one of those guys where if you're asking too much of him um yes. you're you're gonna end up getting disappointed um yes so I think you know, let him be a little bit more limited, uh, and letting letting Elliot kind of be your starter, be the anchor of that, and in that back end, um, I, I think is so valuable. Um, and I just can't get over two years for six million dollars, man. Like that's that's a really good deal, man. That's like uh, that's that's really really good for a guy who's gonna gonna start at safety for you. The Steelers have done that with every position. I mean, think of Omar Khan is a genius. He's a genius. There were. I, I read reports or not reports, but like people and I get it like, you know, at some point ESPN just became something that you were just going to look at and go. I disagree with most things that come out of your mouth. There are a lot of national things out there that you kind of feel the same way about. I'm, there are a lot of people that feel the same way about us, but there was a lot of people talking out there about how Omar Khan stinks a lot. Of, nobody, no Steelers fans, but a lot of national people talking about Omar Khan's not doing enough. He hasn't done enough. I don't know how much faith I have in Omar Khan. Omar Khan's a genius. This guy is phenomenal. I mean, he signed Deshaun Elliott for a bargain yesterday while scouting Clemson's pro day. The guy wasn't even in the office. Like, yeah. dude knows what he's talking about. That front office around him knows what they're doing. When it comes to contracts, man, he is a wizard. He is the con artist. Con artist continues to strike. To get that, to get Patrick Queen for less than market value, to get Russell Wilson for $1.2 million, I mean, just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, and I, I think the thing that's that I – respect the most and and uh, i think one of his best attributes is it's always seems like there's a plan you know yes like you watch guys fly off the board but uh you know this and you think the steelers are falling behind and you think that they're they're missing out on opportunities and then they make their next signing and you're like oh okay that was pretty good i mean there, there's yeah. like a there's a i mean maybe it wasn't their first plan but there is there's someone uh there's always a plan b there's always someone that they can say Look, we can fall back on this guy. He might not have been our first option, but he is going to be quality. Uh, he's a good value uh, for us. Like they're never, I, I don't think there's ever going to be a reason to panic. You know, if the Steelers miss out on a certain free agent or a certain guy in the draft, like Steelers are going to get someone valuable. They're going to get someone uh, who can contribute to that team under under Omar Khan. They're not going to. I don't know. Maybe they're not taking as many big swings as people would want, but. Uh, I don't know. They're getting good value and they're and they're building a solid foundation for this team. I agree. I agree. That's why I mean we're going to talk about wide receiver here in a minute, but that's why when it comes to the wide receivers it's just like you don't trade Deontay Johnson unless you know what's going to come next. You know, I don't care how backed into a corner you are, you don't trade Deontay Johnson unless you have a plan and I think the Steelers have a plan. Let's talk about Montrevious Adams. Resigns 28 years old, he resigns for a 2-year deal. I mean, you're a big Montrevious Adams fan. I'm a big Montrevious Adams fan. Comes in here to be Keanu Benton's backup, but obviously has been a key contributor for the Pittsburgh Steelers over the last two seasons. Your thoughts there? Does it, in your mind, end the defensive line additions for the Steelers, or do they keep going and you see more coming for this team? Yeah, uh, you you're right. I am a big Montrevious Adams fan. Uh, Adams fan. I was really happy when I saw that they they resigned him. It was one of the guys I think at the beginning of the off season that we were like, this is the free agent. You know, this is, should be yes. one of the first guys that you that you turn to. Um, he, uh, you know, did kind of deal with some injuries last year. wasn't always around. Um, but I think he's really productive when he is on the field. Um, he is a 
starter caliber guy. Um, and when you've got Keanu Benton in the mix too, um, that just makes this D line a lot deeper. Um, he's, yep. you know, uh, more of the, he's closer to that kind of not necessarily a nose tackle, but he, he plays the interior of the defensive line. They needed, needed some depth there. And, uh, I don't know. Keanu Benton made makes uh, Montrevious Adams kind of a luxury, quite honestly. He is, like I said, a guy who's going to back up, but a guy who's capable of being a starter. Like he would be a starter on a bunch of different teams in the NFL. So I think yep. that you were able to get him back in that kind of role is is pretty remarkable. Like we were just talking about with Omar Khan. Um, I don't think this ends, you know, their hunt for for more defensive linemen. I think you still need to add some depth there. Um, you know, I, I know they've. Um, I, I think there's still some options out there, but yeah. I, I don't think they're going to, I still don't think this is a position that they're going to wait till the NFL draft to, to help fill. Like, I think you need, you need some veterans there. I, I think they're going to try to address this need in free agency. Um, but I, I think you definitely need some more bodies there. At least um, I, I just don't think you can walk in with, you know, 30, how old is Cam Hayward? 30, 35, 34, 35. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's old. Yeah, thirty-five-year-old Cameron Hayward, a rookie, and Montrevious Adams. Like you need a little bit more there, uh, and then you're yep. looking at you know like Isaiah Loudermilk after that, which I like Isaiah Loudermilk. You know, if he's your your fourth defensive tackle, I'm a little bit worried there. So, yes. um, I think you need you need maybe one more piece. I think on the defensive line, and then I'm feeling comfortable. But this was yeah. a big piece. This was a big domino to fall, and uh, I think a really good move for for the Steelers. They also locked him up for a, multiple years. Uh, yeah, and two I think, years. Yeah, and Adams is not old yet. He, no, he is twenty-eight not, years old. Just right, turned twenty-eight like, too, I think. Right. So you know, this is not a. It's not like you were getting a guy who's who's in decline. I think this is a guy who still kind of is in his prime. Yep, I agree. I agree. I think that's a huge move. It allows Keanu Benton to move to either side, which I think is key because the Pittsburgh Steelers cannot tie themselves down with Keanu Benton playing nose tackle. Allow him to play both uh, like actual defensive tackle roles, three three technique. I think that that is, you know, massive. Adams is a good pass rusher. He's a big body. He actually played good run defense last season when he was available. I get it. He's dealing with some injuries, but I think that Adams is a good player. And I think to lock him down for two years is significant. I think he is a good, he's a good depth piece. He's, he's your Tyson Alualu in a different form, obviously, but he's your reliable veteran backup that you will keep here because he is pretty much just part of the team. The Steelers always need that. Be able being able to move Keanu Benton around is massive. I agree with you. You have to sign somebody else. I still think it's crazy that the Steelers are going into the season with Larry Ogunjobi as their starting defensive end. I think that is wild, but that's what they're going to do because they've missed out on all the big guys and they just got to find somebody else behind him because I have no DeMarvin Leal. I have no faith in, I think that that project's over. I think that yeah, we're going to see the I decline if, of that. Yeah. If he was going to be someone, I think we would have seen that by now. Yeah. I just don't think that's going to happen. Not in Pittsburgh. And Isaiah Loudermill, cool. I, I think he's good for what he does, but I don't think he is. I think he's good for what he does, but you need somebody else. You know, he can't be your only one. You lost Armand Watts. You got to add somebody else. I think they do add somebody else where I don't know because free agency is getting thin and they'll pull somebody out just like the Deshaun Elliott move. And I, you know, I'm just, you, you're going to look at it and go, I don't know who that is, but then you're going to be like, oh, okay, that was, that was all right. I think that'll happen. Yeah. And I, just, I, I don't think I love that they kind of got backed into a corner and have to keep Larry Ogunjobi. Um, yes. Like a fine player, but I also, that was a guy that we thought, I, I think we both thought this, that, that he would end up getting cut. Like this would, he would be a cap casualty at some point this offseason. At least I did. Um, so yes. I, I don't know. It's, it's not totally ideal, but at this point, you like, you can't release Larry Ogunjobi now. Like you don't, no. you don't have the. You don't have no, the space to do that, and and you you have bigger needs than than yeah you know having to worry about finding two defensive tackles. You know, yeah, you can't you can't just dive into that and say, oh, all right, well we have Cam Hayward who's thirty five, and you know that's good enough. We have Keanu Benton, so no, you you need a, another option. I don't think they're going to have that other option, so it's where they are. But I think it's a good move, and I think that shores up a part of their line that needed to be shored up. All right, last thing I want to talk about. Next thing I want to talk about. Pittsburgh Steelers still fighting for Tyler Boyd as of the time we're recording this, which could change, you know, in 10 seconds after we get off here. Who knows? Fighting with Tyler Boyd for or fighting for Tyler Boyd with the Kansas City Chiefs and the New York Jets. If they don't get him, there is another name that emerged as of yesterday, reinstated to the NFL or applied for reinstate 
in statement to the NFL, former New York Jets, Tennessee Titans wide receiver Corey Davis. Everybody immediately linked him to Arthur Smith. Oh, his best years were in Tennessee with the Titans under Arthur Smith. That could be a move. He's 29 years old. He missed last season, stepped away from football for personal reasons. Looking to come back. His last season in the in the league, 13 games, 32 receptions, 536 yards, two touchdowns. His best season in the league under Arthur Smith, 984 yards, five touchdowns. You got to remember that he was the number two, really the number three, because possibly the number four. I mean, offensive weapon-wise, he was easily number four because you looked at Derrick Henry as number one. A.J. Brown was there having a stud year, and Jonu Smith was also there having a stud year as a tight end. So you looked at that, and you just said, you know, Corey Davis is in the mix to have 984 yards is a pretty good season. I mean, option for the Pittsburgh Steelers, good enough option for the Pittsburgh Steelers if if he is somebody that they're looking at. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's interesting because his like his last year in the league, he had not a career low in yards, but I think the third lowest yards of his career, but he had the highest yards per catch. Like, seems yeah. like he still was a big play threat. I just get wary of guys like this who are a year removed from their last time playing in the NFL. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think one of the things about Davis that, you know, really enticed you, like when he was coming out of college, when he was, you know, a young guy in the NFL um, was like his athletic ability um, and his ability to like win contested catches. Is that still going to be there at 29 years old after a year True. off in the league? I, I'm True. not really sure. Um, can he play in the slot? Like, can he, you know, like I'm know. not, totally sure about that like um I, I i'm a little wary about this I, it would definitely be on a cheap contract so that's what makes me not be completely out on it um i think it's certainly a possibility and i wouldn't hate it um at the right price but this is not a guy that i'm looking at saying oh it's a reliable start you know this is a starting quality guy like this is a guy that can can absolutely fill in um fill in for fill in that slot receiver role and be an upgrade over uh, Allen Robinson. Um, yep. I think he'd be valuable as like a veteran presence. Um, you know, we've, we talked about this before getting on, but you know, wide receiver room with George Pickens and Calvin Austin as your two oldest guys in there, probably not your best, probably not ideal, no, um, good but yeah. So I, I would, I wouldn't mind Davis in that sense, but uh, I, I'll put it this way. I wouldn't hate signing Corey Davis. Um, I would hate if he's your only wide receiver signing. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. I agree. Or, Yes, I agree. Depending on Cal- Calvin Austin is such a question mark here. Like he is, he literally changes everything and you have to approach it because you have to approach it. Like Calvin Austin didn't really do a ton last year. You don't know if he's ready to be your starting slot guy. So you can't take the risk that he is your starting slot guy. But if he is your starting slot guy, then why are you going out to sign Tyler Boyd? Because you'd rather Calvin Austin because he's young and he's you know electric and he could do all these cool things that brings so many like so many questions into that because if he is if he is ready and you can't approach it like he is but if he is Corey Davis is a great signing he makes a lot of sense as like that backup outside option to George Pickens and whoever else they draft they don't really need a third slot guy you know or a second slot guy and if you do need a second slot guy you could go find a second slot guy somewhere whether that's deeper in the draft, whether that's Pat Fryermuth, whether that's Connor Hayward, there are there are plenty of options to go get a second slot guy. If he's not ready, then you need a slot guy now. And Corey Davis is a terrible signing because why would you why would you waste your value or your funds for wide receiver on an outside guy that is just going to be a backup and you still don't have a starter and you're pretty much in the same spot. You've just added somebody. And don't get me wrong. He's like definitely an upgrade over Miles Boykin, but I just, I don't know if it makes sense. It In the sense of can Arthur Smith get the most out of him? I 100% think that he could. And I 100% think that if Arthur Smith is sitting around saying, go sign that guy, I'm listening to him saying, yeah, go sign that guy. But I don't think he's my top option. I think you need a slot. I think 100% you need a slot in free agency because you're not going to go draft one. You're going to draft an outside guy. Corey Davis isn't that versatile, and that that concerns me. Now, now if you're going to go sign Tyler Boyd for whatever, and then you're going to sign Corey Davis for like a million bucks, two million bucks, cool. I'm all about that. You know, if you're going to make both of them, and then because at that point, Corey Davis is sitting here going, I know for a fact I'm the third outside guy 
and I might end up being the fourth outside guy, depending on how good Calvin Austin is. And that's like, that's okay because I signed for a million dollars and I took a year off next year. But if you're not going to get both, I think that's concerning. Yeah. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I also will say I, we did this with Ryan Tannehill. I'm a little concerned about the whole like Arthur Smith retread thing. Like I, yeah. I'm not in on just saying, well, this guy was good in four years ago with, with Arthur Smith as his offensive coordinator. Like, I, I don't like that that's like I, I feel like we've done that a couple times with like you Everybody. know we like the royal we. yeah it's like <laughs> ah yeah. oh, four years ago he's great with Arthur Smith like I'm not I'm not really about just saying like oh well he'll he'll definitely be it like Arthur like you said Arthur Smith could get the most out of him what yeah. is the most out of him right now at this point yeah. in time you know that's that, true that's, that's that's the only thing that concerns me about it that's very true that's very true I'm not gonna act like I'm not gonna act like that's not I just I don't know what the other options are currently yeah you know and and if that's the case then cool but again if you're gonna go out and sign i think that's why he's a good second you know cool at that point it's it's risk free and you've upgraded because a year ago you're you're like end of the depth chart guys were miles boykin and gunner olszewski that is not where you wanted it to be so if you're end of the depth chart guys are Corey davis and miles boykin you're sitting around going yeah that ain't bad that's like what could do worse yeah it could be way worse so i think if that's your approach cool if you're signing him with the expectation of like he may have to start week one you have utterly screwed up and i just don't think the steelers could do that and i don't think that that's their plan because they have not shown any indication of we're gonna sign bad people and ask them to start like we did last year so it's a name to watch but i wouldn't i wouldn't make it the first option for the pittsburgh steelers with that said we're heading out of here. Thank you guys so much for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash All Steelers Talk. Check us out anywhere you get your podcast. Make sure to go hit the subscribe or the link in the comments below to subscribe to our Clips channel. Once we hit 1,000, we got plenty of giveaways, including a signed Mean Joe Green jersey that has already arrived. Can't wait to give all those things to you. At the end of today, I think we're giving away a Russell Wilson t-shirt. There's a tweet on our twitter page i will retweet it again and again and again and again so make sure that you catch that one and as always find all our stuff at allsteelers.com and our pit coverage live from the acc tournament down in washington dc at inside the panthers.com we will be back on monday enjoy a wonderful weekend in the berg peace